Don here, back with another live stream. Yeah, it's been a while, uh, but uh, got things set up again with my uh, lapel on. Uh, can't hardly see them, but I got my lapels on and on. Can't go through cam through through the Wi-Fi. I was having to use it through a USB adapter, and uh, I don't know why. Well, I've just been making a bunch of test videos. That's what's on my mind. But anyway, let me uh, <coughs> check my sound over there before i continue the stream zella but it's been it's been doing that for a long time it usually straightens up after a little bit let's see i forgot what buttons are what yeah there we go okay <clears throat> so i'm just gonna let it sit there being muted and playing but everything looks good okay so what i'm doing today is uh Get on the desktop. <clears throat> I want to. Uh, I want to back up my phones. So first, I'll show you. Okay, I'm going to use Lucky Backup to back up. Now, here's my backups that I've done. You know, uh, I'll say I'm going to do phone two. I've already done phone three and figured out how to do it with Lucky Backup. And so here's my uh, Seagate expansion drive, the five terabyte one. And uh, you know, like my videos. Now, the newest video I have is. 11719 on there. Now I've got several on the phone that need to be backed up. Usually what I do <clears throat> is um, well, I like to get them backed up. I I, I kind of have to been, been depending. Usually I what I've been doing is just kind of letting it go and let they just automatically go to Google Photos, but uh, uh, I want a better back. I, I want to make sure sometimes that some of these might be especially some of the older ones I did in uh, as high quality as I could get, and our, uh, you know, Google Photos, they just tell you we will back it up in a good quality. They don't tell you what resolu what DPI, what anything, you know. So uh, you don't really know what they're <laughs> what size, what if they're uh, downsizing your video a little bit. I'll just say it that way. Uh, but oh yeah, now my stream is okay. It's green now. So anyway, but it's always you know you need you always want to have your own. I always want to have my own personal backups i don't want to depend on you know other services they could cancel those at any time and delete all your stuff so um, <clears throat> um see my video i'm making that's one reason why i have that open let's see resources okay that's all good now um let me go over here to my endoscope and now that's phone two and that's the way it stays most of the time. And this is why I want to do it over the Wi-Fi <clears throat> with Lucky Backup. Lucky Backup is my favorite backup software. But uh, <coughs> 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 sorry. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to kind of move around, and I did all. I'm gonna go ahead and, and I did all. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to uh, the lapel mic now, so I can move without trouble, without getting away from the mic. So this is how it stays, and I want to show you the app I'm gonna to use to make this work. It, you know, it's not too hard normally to pop your cover off and get your SD card out, put it in a adapter. Well, I have an SD card adapter which is actually just almost, it, it's cracking and coming apart on me, but I think it would, I'm scared that I'll, I could actually get it in there backwards with it like that and, and maybe short things out. But I've been using it for, well, I had two of them, and the other one, the first one just quit working. I think the electronics went bad somehow. That tape is to keep the SD card from falling out. Um, but um, they're real handy because this, this machine does not have an uh, SD card slot, so that's the only way I can plug in an SD card to this to this machine, then my main machine, the Lenovo i5. But uh, so you can do that. But um, with I can, I have been doing that. But it's a pain because see, I have t uh, these two phones are mounted. Rubber bands is what holds them on here, and it works surprisingly well. It, they actually turn. They actually un, uh, unexpected uh, feature is that they create a shock mount. So if I drop this phone. It doesn't have to get as hard of a hit, it, or if I, or if I accidentally pull on. The, see, I have to keep them plugged in to uh, run the cameras, you know, to stream them when I'm streaming my videos to to the 
over the Wi-Fi to the desktop to do my live stream. <clears throat> and I have to keep them plugged in, or they only last about 10 minutes. And um, but sometimes, you know, when I'm moving them around with them plugged in, I'm, it might yank on them on the phone, and it it won't uh, has a shock mount. <clears throat> so um, I'm trying to. I'm always bad about that. To see that big old metal black thing, that is one. It's one of those paper clips. It's a giant one. I actually ordered them years ago on accident from Staples. I mean, I thought I was getting one that was, uh, you know, like three quarters of an inch wide or something, and it was three quarters of an inch. Uh, it'll hold three quarters of an inch of paper. Is what it was. So, uh, so I, I really never had any <laughs> any wad, wad of paper big enough to use them. So they sat around until now. Now they're my part of my phone mount. I'll show it on the other camera in a minute. But I wanted to show you the software that you know you in order to connect i'm going to connect over an ssh to my uh let's see if i can do that no i'm going to at the wrong end yeah I'm trying to get it to where you can see there it is i don't think i can do it let's see i'll get it opened up it's already running but i was trying to try to show it uh, <clears throat> it's called ssh droid and uh <clears throat> there's a you know this is the one first one I tried out and I really liked it I noticed recently the other day I was doing some research on this I, if I turn it the other way you won't really let's see it's upside down and my cables didn't get hung up let's see if I can do it <clears throat> I can never figure it out again yeah I'm not there we go so it tells you the IP address and the port numbers and stuff and so it's real simple to use. It even has a help. In the help, it tells you exactly how to hook up to it in different scenarios in, inside the program. So it's really cool in that respect. Now, in order to act, not accidentally hit the home screen, get it back on the home screen, and it'll still stay running in the background, you won't accidentally close it. So uh, <clears throat> now let me switch to other camera and you can see what, why I'm going around in circles here so I keep the uh, as for to do this I need I want to keep it plugged in so that it doesn't go down on me while I'm transferring my files because I, I may have three or four five ten gigabytes of videos on there I'm not sure I have a 64 gigabyte SD card <clears throat> and uh, so I'm there telling it's been a while since I've backed them up and what I do is I back them up and delete them but see this whole rig here I can hold, I can do a handy cam this way, you know, I can carry it around that way. I don't do that much. Mostly I use a, a mic clip and you, this mic stand right here behind me. So you can't see the clip. Let's see. I don't know if I can get it down low enough for you to see it. There it is. It's a big, uh, it's a mic clip for like wireless mics and stuff. It'll open up real big. And so, you know, this stick was a little small, but when I put that, I put rubber bands, you can see the blue, I put rubber bands on the clip, the clip, not the phone. Uh, and so it closes real tight. And so it holds it really well. And if I do want to tag it out in handheld, I can. I, I don't do it too often because I just end up making bad videos. I'm not very good at it with these phones. I used to run real cameras. Uh, I had a, a Sony, <clears throat> I had bought it at auction in the late 90s. 350 bucks and when it was new it was a ten thousand dollar studio camera and i loved that thing but i used to be pretty good at running camera but that thing was a shoulder you know big head you know 35 45 pound camera that you put on your shoulder so it's really harder with something like this for me uh, of course that would wear me out now and i couldn't do it nowadays back then uh, well it wore me out after a while back then but anyway um let's see where am i going to put this i'm going to put this back in the clip <laughs> So that it won't, uh, I won't accidentally yank the cables or want to make sure the power is plugged in and not get loose with me moving things around like that. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it up there because, you know, it's, it's, it's on the Wi-Fi. Let's see. I use this, uh, this is actually what holds your camera, your coffee bean bags closed. I, I save those and use them. They're sometimes really handy. I save twisties and I save those. Let's see, so there we go. Now that keeps that from uh, getting yanked out of the phone when I move, if I move things around. So now that's a, I bought me two 10 foot 
charging cables, which really has helped a lot with being able to, you know, move your... So that's a mic stand, and then I have a tripod that the one that you're looking at me with, and it's hooked up the same way. So, uh, <clears throat> so I just thought I would explain why I feel the need to, you know, back up my phones over Wi-Fi instead of just taking the... I, 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 it turns, you know, what happens is I just get... I put it off because I, I don't want to take all that apart and have to put it back together. It's not real hard and it doesn't take a real long time, but it is real tedious for me my I, my hands drop and I fumble a lot and so getting my rubber bands back in there the right way it, it just gets tedious and uh, aggravating <clears throat> so um, so let me see what do I want to show now I want to get to uh, <clears throat> get to uh, I just get lucky back up up and running now I've already tested get figured out how to do it on phone 3 the one that I'm using for my lapel uh, <clears throat> to run my lapel mic through the Wi, you know, through phone three to the Wi-Fi to the desktop, the stream, and that's what I'm talking on right this minute, actually. <clears throat> so Lucky Backup has two, two. You have Lucky Backup regular user and super user. Now I always use super user because uh, I I want my I want it to run automatically every day about 10, 15 minutes after I boot the machine up. Go ahead and open it up. And uh, you got to put in your root password to, to, to get into it. So for one thing, you'll, you'll, you won't be restricted on anything that you try to back up, which most of all I back up is in my user Dawn anyway. And I actually always forget that when I build a new machine and I had set up all my profiles in the regular user and then it, it wouldn't run automatically. Everything was fine except for uh, uh, I could get all my files that I wanted to back up, but it wouldn't run automatically on the Chrome job. So... I imported it, and it won't let you change the name of the, the default. You can't import it to the default. It has to have a different name, so uh, <clears throat> it still runs just fine. You click there to schedule it. No, that's that's the schedule right there. Um, <clears throat> and so these three always run every day automatically. <clears throat> I'm on the camera. Yes, let's try to get on the desktop. Okay, so all that stuff you didn't see, I opened up. Looking back up, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just show it again that part that's what I was talking about lucky backup regular user lucky backup super I'm using super user I had to put in my root password and so mine is set up like this and it start it always opens up like this uh, and it's, it's empty and I'm like oh what well, sometimes I go oh no where's, I thought I had profiles in there and and <clears throat> I had built them originally in the regular user and then they wouldn't run automatically uh, even though I let me happily set the schedule but it wouldn't run because I didn't have enough, the I needed root permission to run a Chrome job so in the background like that automatically. So I imported the profile from the uh, other user, the regular user, <clears throat> and uh, and then built from there I've added. See, I, I, what I had been doing is, I was still using Lucky Backup, but I would plug my SD card into the computer with the USB adapter, and then I would manually run those every once in a while. Well, I wanna, I, what I wanna do is get away from doing that, <clears throat> and so I don't want these to run right now because it really uses a lot of resources when it's running, and I can't actually, I couldn't, it would mess up my stream is what it would do on this machine. It's not that powerful of a machine. It's a quad core with four gig of RAM, uh, 2.5 gigahertz Intel processor. So, uh, but I had set up phone three and I changed the, uh, <clears throat> changed it to go to, uh, yeah, it says to USB drive. My, that drive I was just showing the files on on the left side here, that's my US, five terabyte USB backup drive. What I have going on now is it also backs up, first it backs up to the 4.5 is what you really get, the five terabyte, and then it takes and copies the files from the five terabyte to the eight terabyte, which the reality is what, I, what it shows up in there, it's 4.5 terabyte usable space, 7.3 terabyte usable space, so. Um, let's see if I can go back to where I was now. There we go. Now this is my folder that I want to do next. Uh, phone twos. I want to add. You know, I want to set it up to automatically. Well, not automatically because I'll show that in a minute. The reason like you can't. We never know if the phones are going to be on or not. But uh, so I will still do it manually. But all I have to do is go in here and either leave those like they are or uncheck them and then click the ones I want to run and then run them. <clears throat> so uh, 
I'll show uh, phone three. I've already done it and tested it. So I'm going to click on modify to show the setup and to also get what I need to know um, out of here for the setup the next one. Okay, so see this one goes uh, phone three to the IP address uh, and the 4.5 terabyte. You got to, you know, that's just the name I gave it. Uh, backup source inside destination and uh, need the source is storage SD card. Oh, that's one of the first things I need. I'm going to copy that. And then the description I usually don't put in there. I'm not going to exclude anything. I'm not going to, I'm going to do normal include and I'm going to set up remote. Now, see, you put the IP address in there, the uh, port, the SSH port that uh, SSH George uses is not 22, it's 2222. And then I uh, told it where my private key, uh, RSA uh, pre shared key file is. And uh, you can, you know, a lot, um, <clears throat> you can do it two ways. You can either have a pre shared key on both devices or in this case, I have a pre-shared key. I don't even know for sure if I actually have to have that selected, but it worked, and so I left it. Um, I thought I was going to have to set up a pre-shared key on the phone, but it popped up and asked for the password. So that's why I'm going to do it manually, because, uh, because if I had it set up to run automatically, it would be popping up errors all the time, saying the, you know, the source is not there and blah, blah, blah. So... I think I'll just, for now, I'm just going to do it manually. And actually, I found out during my research that SSH Droid, it's not an open source app, and I like those the best for Android just as well as Linux, you know. And I found one that is open source, <clears throat> but it won't run on my phones because I'm my phones are old and they're, they're running Android 4.3. I need to, I, I studied when I first got them to about three years ago about how to, you know, flash the ROMs and all that stuff, but I haven't ever done it. Um, and tried it. <clears throat> so I, I know I could go newer. I don't know if I could go to the newest, but I could go newer. I could at least probably do Android, you know, five or six or whatever. Uh, but it's 4.3 and SSH Droid runs just happily on there, but it, it you have to pay for it <laughs> in order to get the feature of being able to use a pre-shared key uh, to connect to. It. And I, it's, it's just horse crap. So, uh, and there's some other, there's really very few features you get for paying for it. So, uh, you know, they they could just need to learn to live off their ads and stuff instead of that kind of crap. Um, I'm just too I'm too spoiled by the open source community. You know, they they uh, they share their software for free and then just ask for donations or maybe they'll have ads on their websites or whatever. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, um, I need to set this up for not this IP. It'll be the IP of phone two. And then, you know, there's one, this in here, you always, don't ever do, if you're backing up, if you're backing up, don't ever say delete files on destination. You lose all your previous backups. There's hardly any time when you want to do that. And that is the default in Lucky Backups. So always look at your command options. And then uh, this is what the way I want mine for this. And I usually, it's a good thing to say skip newer destination files, but... In some of these cases, like these phones and stuff, it won't do your backups if you don't uncheck that. Uh, so I went ahead and unchecked that because I knew that. Now, if you think that the files in your backup, you know, if they're newer, they're if they're newer than the files on your phone or whatever you're backing up from, and you and maybe they've actually newer because they've been changed. The thing that get, tricks you up is if you ever do a backup with FTP instead of SFTP. Instead of using SSH, you're using just an insecure, uh, it's what it is, uh, copying files. Then you'll get the day, FTP gives you the day that you did it. And that can just wreak havoc with uh, going by the date. So uh, <clears throat> I recently, I don't remember what it was I was setting up. I, my, I set up backups out there working, and a few days later, I realized they weren't working. And I finally realized that the dates were all screwed up. And sometimes you get a bogus date. It shows like 20 years in the future or something. That'll screw it up too. So uh, if you, you can uncheck that, uh, skip them if they're show to be newer. And see, uh, um, Lucky Backup doesn't just go by the date. They go by, uh, I think they use MD5 checksums and stuff. They use some sort of checksums. And so it's going. More, there's more than one way for it to know that the file should be overwritten. So uh, you won't usually have trouble uh, I usually do leave that checked for an extra, uh, well, it just it just makes sure that you're not, 
spending more time writing files that don't need written and reading files that don't need reading because uh, I have you know quite a bit of data but um, sometimes your data backups won't work if you don't do that so um, check my sound again um, <clears throat> So that's a long explanation, but it's actually a pretty thing that'll really hang you up. And my this drive is actually an NTFS. Now I've reformatted one. Those are both Seagate uh, expansion drives. That eight terabyte I reformatted ext4 because I don't have. I've had this NTFS uh, break at least five times. Well, three to four times, <laughs> and I've had to fix it by running. You know, I had to get on a Windows machine and run uh, check disk and fix disk and whatever. I forgot the, I can't think of the right names for Windows programs, but I had to run that to fix it several times, and that's pretty scary when that was my only backup drive. So it's another reason why I have two backup drives now. But um, but at some point I'm going to, when I'm sure everything's backed up to the 8 terabyte, and I'll have to make sure, you know, really look through it, then I'll reformat that 5 terabyte to, uh, you know, ext4 most likely. Uh, but I actually bought me a real web server, an HP server, and I think they may work in it. I haven't uh, taken them out. I'll take that five terabyte out of its case and see if it will. I'm not sure if it's a hard, if it's a, if it's a laptop size hard drive, it will. It's a, they're both SATA drives, but if it's the regular full size hard drive, then it won't work. It won't fit in there. So in the slots. <clears throat> but anyway, that's down the road. So, um, um, I'm going to hit cancel on this because I don't want to actually change anything. All I want out of here right now is I just wanted to copy. What did I copy? I've already forgot. Oh, I. Where did it go? Oh, up here. The source. So um, there's two things I want. I want SD card O and SD card 1. And on my phones, let's see. Let's look in this one. This will be the one that will be. Three, yeah. Modify. Okay. Ex we got to go to uh, experienced or whatever it says there, advanced. I always do that so I can read everything. Actually, I go a little further so I can read my title. I made a long title. Yeah, sometimes it's real helpful to use those excludes, but I'm not doing that right now. And only include, I use that a lot in those, those daily backups. It gets a little complicated, but it's really helpful. Um, <clears throat> So in this one, it is SD card one. Now, what I was going to say is your, your add-in SD card ends up being, or the way my phones are set up, they end up being SD card O, and your onboard memory is SD card one, which is in Linux, if you know how, they, how it numbers drives, that would make, uh, it, you would think, you know, the, the onboard would, should be SD card O because it's the first one. Uh, but I, I guess it's because I set it every, I set up the the phone to to store everything it possibly can onto the add-on SD card because it only has two gigabytes of onboard memory. So I guess that's why it does that. But uh, it threw me around and around for a while. But anyway, the, yeah, these should be the same. Um, again, make sure you don't have delete files on destination. So now I want to go to yeah this is, here we go number two okay so this one is set up the old way that I used to do it and uh, <clears throat> backing up to the uh, to the uh, expansion drive so that doesn't need to be changed that's the right address. Yeah, strong TM. Okay, but the source is no longer that was that was media dawn and all those numbers. That was the what what would the system would automatically give the uh, SD card when I would plug it in with the USB adapter. So, so this one is going to be SD card O, I believe. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I'll just do them the same way. The, First one, is, as they're laid out there, I'll do SD card O and then SD card 1. That, that would make sense to my brain. Okay. And uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, I, be, I put the IP address in there. So let's go get the IP address. Uh, let's see, yeah, I can't remember it off the top of my head right now. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. <clears throat> but I'm going to open up my web browser because I can get it real quick from there. Um, because I have, just because I have, you know, what I'm streaming, 
uh, like sometimes I uh, click on that and that'll go to it. It can't go there because it's not there, but because it's the, the camera app's not running. Now, my, my camera one is running, so this is what it's for. It's for uh, IP Webcam, another app that I use. It's remote control and viewing of your, of your phone as it's streaming over the network. But Cam 2, I turned it off so that it's while I'm copying all these files, it wouldn't also have the camera competing for the bandwidth. Well, there's the IP right there, and that's what I want. I want to be able to copy and paste that IP. I already put the SD card in there. So um, I just want to put that. Well, let's go put it in its place, and then we'll change the name up there. That's the main thing. Exclude is going to be the same. Include normal, remote. I want to say use remote. The host, we don't want to put the port in there. It took me a while kind of messing around with it to figure that all out. Now, you can use an rsync password file, but that's, I haven't ever learned how to set those up, so I don't try to do that. Now, the port, uh, I don't want 8080, though. I didn't mean, to, I want 2222. I know that, so now. Let's see, can you go there? Yeah, there we go. The last time I... Oh, that's the wrong... Uh, I don't want that. I don't want roots. Oh, yes, I do want... Oh. Root SSH. Known host. I don't want roots SSH, dot .ssh folder. I want Dawn's. Um, you know? Well, I guess I could have. I, I guess I don't... Oh, I don't have one. It's not a good idea to uh, do these transfers as root. So, uh, and uh, you know, you uh, I'm not logging into the phone as root, so it wouldn't do you any benefit anyway. It's not a good idea on a security standpoint to, to do it as root, so, so I don't set up an SS. And now here's the problem though. It can't see the dot, I don't know how come it did that. I guess, uh, that's really weird. It could see, you could see the dot folders, the dot SSH folder as root, but in the dot it can't. But you can get around that by copying and pasting your, um, just go here and go, go to my home directory, go to .ssh, and what I want is, I don't want the public key, I want that one there. Now, let's see if we can get that, a way to copy that. Homedon.ssh. You need to copy that. Let me see if we can copy that from there. Yeah. And then ID underscore S RSA. I can probably type that well enough. But this right here, you can type it if you're good at typing. But uh, And this you used to could copy from up here, but you see how they've abbreviated and put these stupid triangles in there and all that? I wish I could figure out how to change that back to use for until just this last year. I think Fedora 28 is when they started that junk. I hate it. I've always copied from there. I can copy, if I go to where the file is, just like I'm doing now, then I can just copy the whole thing. Uh, oh, double clicked in there and it, let, and it came up. Now I think if you right click to copy, you no, know, used to if you right click to copy, it'd go away and it wouldn't copy it. Uh, how about that? I don't want it to show it that way that we're showing it though. I hate that. Uh, so well, that's cool. I double clicked. That's all I did, and it and it changed it to the real address. Okay. So now the private key, paste it in there. Control V. That's how come that V went in there. There we go. Oh, it didn't get the name of the file though, did it? So it wouldn't have made any difference either way. Uh, the name of the file was. Let's look at the properties on the file. I, I'm really bad at getting things typed right. So copy it that way out of the properties. Get off there, I don't wanna accidentally delete that. Sometimes you hit, I hit keyboard shortcuts and I mess things up. Okay, now the validate's really helpful, but it also will very often say you're fine when you're actually not. So check everything over and over before you decide you think it's gonna work. Now, command options. See, it's already been, I've already did that when I previously set them up. You know, it's not delete anything. But I, I want to change that from skip newer destination files. And uh, <clears throat> just remember, I'm still on my lapel. It doesn't make a lot of difference, but. Change that from 
but uh, I mean I like to be on the SM58 just because it has a better, warmer sound. Okay, um, I'll just stay like I am for right now. Um, and and you don't you don't want to select that the destination as NT, fat NTFS unless it really is. If you're using a Linux file system to back up to, then uncheck that. Okay, and we don't want to also execute anything. And uh, oh, the user I didn't put that in there. I knew something seemed like it was missing. Okay, home don sshrdss. Like I said, I'm not completely sure that's actually, I don't know if it will let you if you don't put that in there. And I'm not going to just try. I know it works with it in there, so I'm not going to just experiment. It took me a long time to get everything right the last time because I had a very vague memory of how to do it. Okay, so um, I do want to change the name of it. Let's see. Phone 2, not SD card. Two, yeah, phone two at the IP that tells me I'm doing over Wi-Fi to the backup drive. That's good. I like that. Let's hit validate. Seem to be okay. You can see the command. That's the actual command. If you wanted to run that command, you could, and it would do it in the terminal. <coughs> I wouldn't do it because I'd be scared I'd mess something up. But <coughs> tell you where it's going. And um, all that. So, yeah, see, copy command to clipboard. It may be the whole thing, all the way from there to there. Yeah, I think it is. <clears throat> okay, so um, starting at the beginning, make sure everything seems okay. Normal include. Okay, so say okay. Now what I'm going to do is do a dry run and see if it looks like it's going to work. Oh, storage SDLD card O is empty or does not exist. Skipped. Let's make sure that uh, it may be that it went to sleep on me. Let's look back at our, well, let's look and make sure that the, uh, that my phone, you know, I didn't accidentally close the app or something. I'll try to, no, I can't leave it up in there. I started to just leave it laying out in case I had to mess with it again. Normally, I don't take this off of here or anything, so I'm not, act, you know, I'm not running the risk of accidentally unplugging things and turning things off. SHH Droid is running, but it could be that the phone just flat completely went to sleep. Now, oh, that's another thing inside the app of SSH Droid. You can tell it to keep it awake. I think it says lock or something, but go into the settings and tell it to keep the phone awake while you're uh, backing things up, or else it will go to sleep on you and break your backup. 141, 2222, and I'm not going to try to show all that again like I already did that a minute ago. So uh, I guess I'll put it back up here. I don't know where else to set it, really. Oh, let's go on the endoscope. Yeah, so it's upside down, but I'm not going to turn it again. It's because of the cables and all the trouble. Now, I uh, so that I don't accidentally shut that app down or something, I'll go ahead and just hit the home screen. Now, go to the home screen, and then it stays running in the background. So it was running still. There wasn't any problem with that. I don't know why it... <laughs> says that I'll probably have something in there wrong is what I'm going to guess. So uh, uncheck it. Let's see, did I just click? Yeah, okay. Modify. Advanced. It said that SD card O was not there.
Okay, so I'm using remote. Oh, I got it wrong right there. Destination. My source. Now see, it told me it thought it was okay, but it wasn't okay. My source is 192.168.0.141. And it's really, the way they have it broken up, it took me forever to learn how to do this because, uh, th this remote part. Because up here is your source, and so first thing I did was put the IP up there. Well, that doesn't work. You, you, you just put the local source, like you pretend you're on that drive, and that's what goes in there. Then down here is where you tell it, the remote information. So it just, it, it, it's not logical at all. Uh, I finally found, I think I finally did some searches, found their how-to page and then didn't, and it's a super long page. And I did searches through that page and finally found it, and, you know, find on this page. So you see, it still says the same thing. It seems to be okay. Okay, now, I think everything will be okay. Now let's click on it again. Yep. Okay. Status okay. Using a remote check skip. Now I'm going to do a dry run. Click on that and then click run. And it goes a whole lot faster now. You've got to give it the password for that machine. It said, first it says, oh, first it says, do you trust this machine? Uh, so I'm going to say yes. I don't know if you just say yes or why. I think you say yes. Oh, yeah, yes. Now it wants the password. Now I've got that ready. So you need the, uh, well, the, this is the password I put into SSH Droid. Oh, and in that SSH Droid default password is admin. And it tells that when you try to log into the machine. So don't. <laughs> Change that, you know, don't leave it default. Okay, now it went really, really fast. That's what I expected. Um, four errors found. Uh, that I'm worried that it saw all the, you know, look at all those videos. That's all videos right there. I guess it just, I guess it's really not that much data. There's more videos, more videos. Now hopefully these are all gonna get copied when we do the real run. Uh, when I was looking, and I said I did phone three already, and I was looking at my backups, and I didn't see, I didn't see, I don't know what videos are on there, but the newest video was from January, and I thought, I know I have some newer videos than that. I, well, I think I do. So we're going to do it on this one and see if it uh, works out as expected. So on this, it's really fast to tell you what's, going, what's happening. The errors, okay, here's the error message right there. Um, <clears throat> some file attributes were not transferred. See previous error code, so that's not a big deal. That actually didn't skip any files. It just couldn't keep the at attributes that were on the phone. That doesn't matter. And part of that is because I'm copying to an NTFS drive because, uh, you know, Android is uh, runs on the Linux kernel, it basically, it's, it works just like Linux. It's not, you know, they say it's not Linux per se, but uh, now here's one, uh, secure file permission denied. Okay, there were some open directory. So there's some directories you couldn't get into, but um, that should be fine. But you do want to pay attention to that because it may be skipping files you're wanting to back up. Yeah, it's right there it tells you SSH droid root, you, uh, as username, Droid you root use root as username. Now this is a weird thing. I didn't because when I first started using that app, you could type root or your regular user and it would work either way with the same password. But then it got to where if you tried to log in as root, it wouldn't work over SSH. It like say with uh, FileZilla was what I was using at the time. And, and FileZilla doesn't work. Any file over a gigabyte, it uh, tries forever. It never stops trying, but it can't copy the files. It, uh, it, I don't know what's going on there. Um, I would use Crusader and just do it manually through Crusader, but Crusader doesn't support doing this anymore. So um, that's what it keeps saying when I try to do it anyway. And uh, I got to thinking, I think it only, it doesn't work with password login, but it, do, you know what, that, I think what it really does, it, it won't work with password login, but it will work with pre-shared keys. But I can't set a pre-shared key on these phones unless I use, I, I could do a bunch of research. Oh no, my stream stopped.
Well, that's real special. Um, it's trying to reconnect. So let's see if it can reconnect before I give up. I've never seen that in my preview. It's showing videos that I might be interested in and in, in there. Okay, it should come back up again here in a minute. Um, that stinks. Let's see. Oh, the, yeah, the audio is still turned on. I don't know. It said it connected in OBS, but the YouTube page. Oh, you got to reload it. I just remembered. Yeah. <clears throat> it said they're on stream complete and. Why would you want to watch videos from your admin page? It's weird. Other other people's videos, not your own. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's not back up. Let's see. What I'm gonna. What I'm thinking. Well, I guess if my stream is just broken, then uh, I'm still recording a video. Let's make sure. Yeah, everything seems fine that I'm recording my video. So what I can do is uh, go to my live dashboard on this computer and see. But I think I'm going to see the same thing. <clears> that at least you'd be showing what I'm talking about. I am still on the desktop. Yeah, okay. Okay, so welcome back. But that's all. That's what I've got over there. But it's not showing that my it says my stream is offline. And I was thinking, well, I don't want my stream offline, you know. Uh, I'll, so I'll stop and start again. Oh, now it's finally coming back. Okay. Um, I may end up uploading my backup video anyway. We'll see. Or I may leave them split into two videos. If it turns out and of course I, I, as soon as I noticed it I stopped uh, I stopped doing my video and I'm just talking about what's the trouble I'm having so so it might be just as well to leave it okay number cam two okay yeah well that's not gonna help me any right now okay um, I'm going to close the web browser just to not give as much things for this machine to do. Okay, so we are back, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, stream died and then came back and OBS restarted automatically for me. So I was saying the uh, morning permanently added, yeah, the, that uh, to my as a known host. Okay, that's what I wanted. Uh, oh, then it says uh, SSH droid uh, use root as username, default password as admin. Well, I was saying um, I used to be able, and I changed my password. Do always change your password with anything. Uh, you know, don't ever use a default password. But I changed my password, and I had discovered that I could log in with the same password as root or regular user. And uh, <clears throat> Don, you know, that, which is, you know, you, uh, you saw that a while ago anyway so uh, of course you got to know the password they won't, the username won't do anybody much you know good, much good if they're trying to work in I mean well it could help but of course it helps but uh, so anyway uh, the storage SD card dot Android secure now that folder you can't get into there's nothing in there that I want dot Android secure permission denied 13 I guess that's I don't know if that's 13 folders or error 13 or what that means but so that that and at the end there'll be red in there if there's an error so you can kind of go through there regular sometimes you've got <coughs> a mile of stuff you know depending on how much you're trying to back up so at the end it just says some file attributes weren't uh, transferred <coughs> and that's not a big deal i couldn't care less i actually want them to be <coughs> read and writable on my backup drive you know so that I can use them. Um, and like I said, uh, that was probably because, you know, Android has got Linux file permissions set up that way, and then I'm back cut backing it up to uh, NTFS drive. So that's another reason why I wish I would have never left that NTFS when I, I left it because it was working well and it was brand new under warranty, and I kind of thought, well, what if I break it, you know? 
uh, reformatting it, which I've been doing that on. I've been reformatting and, and building operating systems for 20 years now, so I shouldn't have <laughs> been too worried about it. But anyway, I, I, I really wish I hadn't have left it. If you're running Linux and you're familiar with the Linux file systems, and tell, I would say don't don't use if you buy a USB backup drive, don't leave it in TFS because they break all the time. Anytime the power you know, that power goes out or the problem with those drives, there's only one real big problem with them, and that's that they have a proprietary USB connection uh, that the US their cable that comes with it has to you know plugs into the the box that the drive's in. It is loose when you get it, and as it ages, it gets even looser just from, and I don't move them around and carry them around. They stay on the rack, you know, in, in this room all the time. Once in a while, maybe the cable gets bumped or something, or I'll, I'll bump that little plug with something up there on my rack, lightly, you know, I'm not dropping stuff on it or anything, and it will move just enough to disconnect. And wh what it would do is break NTFS file system. I haven't had it, um, that since I got the new 8-terabyte drive and reformatted it to EXT4, it's never done that. Uh, the NTFS, I thought it had done it a couple times since then, but it turned out fine after after rebooting the box. I'm plugging, plugging it back in. <clears throat> but uh, So anyway, that's important. Okay, I'm going to go to Don uh, when you're... Important thing to figure out. Okay, so uh, it's going to work. Uh, but I want to set this other one up and run them both at the same time, uh, since they're on the same, you know, same phone. Okay, so, um, so I'm going to get in here and copy this information again. Well, that, I'm going to copy that. And what else do I need? Remote? Yeah, I can copy all of that. Let's see if I can open these both up. I'll try it. No, you can't. Okay, so I got to close that, hit cancel. I'm going to go to the next one. Now, this one's going to be not SD card O, but SD card 1. So you got to remember that. Oh, well, let's get up here and go ahead and change that up there. Source, SD card 1. I don't think you have to put the trailing forward slash, but it works, so I'll leave it. Uh, that's just the title. Well, no, that is the address. That's not just the title. That's the address. Okay, SD card one. Now we got to go to remote. Use remote host. This time source. And I need that IP address. I can type it. Let's see. I can read it from over there. 192.168.0. Oh. 141. 141. Let's see if I get that right. My eyes swap letters and numbers, and they get blurry all the time because I have diabetes, and so I, that's why I have some trouble with that. 192.168.0.141. 192.168.0.141. Right now, I think maybe I can do it okay. Internal storage. Phone 2. Internal storage. Okay. Now then, SSH port. Two 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 two. Let's see if we can go to that file. No, we can't. Okay, so we're gonna have to copy and paste that in there, and I'll have to go get that from the other spot. So I'll have to close this. Let's look at the options before we go. Skip newer. Okay. So I'm gonna leave that blank and and. Uh, well, I guess I could copy it from, uh, yeah, I can copy it from, uh, let's don't close it. I was going to close it and get it out of the other profile, but I'm already over here, aren't I? Yeah, okay. SSH, and then I'll be needing the ID dot RSA, okay. <clears throat> I don't want to copy that. i try to, I don't want to mess that up. Right-click, Properties, Copy. Always hit Cancel when you're fiddling around doing that because you could actually rename that without realizing it. If you hit OK, it'll rename it. I anytime you're in the Properties, that's, that's what I do. Protect, keep Because I've messed things up before. ID dot RSA, ID underscore RSA. Okay, 141. 
two, 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 two. Source. That's going to the right place. Yes. Okay. Validate. Seems to be okay. Go through everything again. It really has to be right, so. You gotta keep checking till you get it right. Okay. Now I'm gonna uncheck this one. Okay, it didn't give me any trouble. Now I'm gonna do the dry run again on this one and see. It's a lot. Okay, now this time I just asked for the password. Finished, one error found. This is really probably not gonna copy anything because I really have, I don't save files onto the internal storage because there's not enough room. What it does copy is, you know, some system files and stuff. Any of them that have been changed, it'll do that. So it said there was an error, but it's, I don't see it. <clears throat> Must have skipped it. That's, I was thinking the errors were red down there at the bottom, but that's green. So it may not be as a serious of an error. Yeah. Okay. I don't even, oh, there, I guess it, this is the one that's it's talking about. It's all I can figure. I don't know. But anyway, now we can run those two profiles. And I took unchecked, and I clicked on both, and I unchecked dry run. Now we'll run them. Okay. Password. Now this could take a while. <clears throat> and I just realized I, sh I really meant to set up the other phone before I ran anything, because now I have to wait for this to finish, because I can't go back. Um, this screen is stuck, you know, if you get out of abort, you abort your backup. It may go way faster than I realize, but I figured if I had any, when I record videos straight onto the phone and don't stream them on, on the Wi-Fi, I can only do 720p because of the bandwidth. Uh, well, because of the, the phones will only, they only run about 35 to, the, the max they can do is like 72 megabits. They usually stay at 35 to 52 megabits. So uh, you can't do a 1080p video over the over my over my network with these phones. Now I could because my routers could do it. They're gigabit routers, and the Wi-Fi is like you know they could realistically run in about 800 megabits. But um, but um, anyway, going blank. So uh, all that stuff moving by real fast. It makes me almost have a seizure <laughs> it just really messes with my eyes so i can't really stand to watch that but uh, right now it's d doing uh i can't and i can't hardly look away from that section because it's moving you know so far so good it's not popping up any errors and uh, yeah sd card o and i did i hope i changed i changed it to sd card one if I didn't, it'll just be backing up the same one again. I know I did it in one spot, but I did it. Did I do it in both spots? You know, like the name. Where did I put it? I did it in the source. I can't remember. Hopefully, I didn't mess it up. <clears throat> I was kind of wanting to see when it got into the. Uh, yeah, there's a video. But what I was going to say, the videos could be three gigabytes or four gigabytes. That's what I'm trying to say about the time, how long it might take. These are obviously not very big because they went pretty fast. Uh, it's telling you, you know, the speed and the megabytes and everything. So it goes by and moves. I can't read it as fast as it goes moves. What it'll do is it gets up to the 87 or 95 percent real quick when you're doing these backups with Lucky Backup, and then all of a sudden you might have an hour, a 20 minutes to two or three hours <laughs> worth of the last stretch. So, and I think that I used to think that was a bad readout, but really what it is is those small files go fast. I guess it does the small files first, maybe. I thought it always went by directory, but I think maybe it does the small files first. And then when it gets to the bigger files, it, of course, slows down. But uh, <clears throat> let's go look in the backup. <clears throat> 
now and see what new files we might have. So there's the internal storage. Uh, that shouldn't really have much of anything in it. There's, see, there's folders that are empty in there because I make sure all the videos actually go to the 64 gigabyte strontium. And camera, let's see. Oh, there's camera and then open camera. Oh, well, that's, as you can see, this is where it's writing right now. You can see right there it's writing that file. And so far they're not that big. They, well, I mean, that used to be a pretty big video file, you know, almost 478 megabytes, but not anymore. <clears throat> but now it's writing one that's, that's why we were able to watch them go by because they were, let's see, <clears throat> 521.19. That's one of those files I do want to get backed up, I'm pretty sure, though. Some of those file videos aren't very long and they're not that big. But, uh, so that's a recent file. And the C12.19.18, uh, I got them organized in newest on top, so uh, yeah, it's writing a file, <coughs> but that's not, I don't usually use that, that camera app, I usually use open camera, it's not writing any open cameras yet, so I guess that's where it is, is it may go by folder, it may not go by size of the file, as a matter of fact, it probably does go by the folders, I'm always thinking things as, a, as on the fly and then I get them mixed up, but uh, <coughs> Let's see, do we have another one or what? Oh, it's still working on it. Yeah, see it says a B92, which I haven't really, I don't, haven't been sitting and watching these be copied before, so. That's, a, that's just like a random number it looks like, and then it part. So it'll turn into one file when it's finished. And I don't know how big that file is. It could be, I was saying that file's not very big. Yeah, because it's not finished being written yet. So uh, that's kind of weird. Unless that's, oh, that's from 18. That, that is a broken file, that part. And they always, they, you know, it, it, look, it has the icon of a zip file. That's what that little box is. But that's really a, a file that didn't get finished writing is what it is. I don't know if it would ever, wait. That, oh. Looky there. This file is being written. Oh, it is, I was... This this video, it's doing. I don't usually sit and watch this. Twelve, nineteen, eighteen. That's how old that file really is. Yeah, that would make sense. I've been that far behind. Yeah, twelve back in December. So yeah, this file, these two will be combined in it. Whatever it it been ends up being, but whatever. App, I don't even know what app uses the folder camera. Oh, I think it's the. Oh, I do think I know. I think it's the camera app that comes with the phone. So some po uh, that file I actually made with the onboard app. Normally I make my videos with this. So you can see 3.8 gigabytes, 3.8 gigabytes, 3.8 gigabytes. That's all the way back in 17. Uh, I used to do that a lot. <clears throat> I used to, uh, well at first that's all the way I did my videos, you know, before I, uh, I had discovered open camera, but, um, uh, well, my machines couldn't run it at the time. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, that was before I got this quad core, and I, all I had was dual cores. And I tried it on a laptop, tried it on a desktop. They just couldn't handle it. Uh, but it also streamlined, and it was pretty new, open camera, when I discovered it. And then uh, then they streamlined it some more, and that helped. But I don't think I could still run it on any of my dual cores. But. So anyway, that is 117.19. Oh. That's a newer video. Maybe that already got copied when I wasn't paying attention in open camera. But there should be several. Uh, there should be 10 videos or so that should get copied, but we'll see. And then that one there is another video app that I hardly ever use. And evidently doesn't work really well because there's a whole bunch of zero. Either, either there's bad copies or a bunch of failed videos there. But zero byte files, and then uh, that one is in every one of my cameras. 100 A and 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 zero, and there's never any files in there. I don't even know what app tries to use that folder. What's going on with that? But that is evidently, it's got 478 megabytes there, of what I'm gathering, and then there's 405 on the way to being added to it. So it's it's already around a gigabyte. It could be a bigger file. <coughs> so. Um, 
yeah, sitting and watching them is not going to be, you know, interesting at all. I don't normally do that. I normally go off and do other things. And I just now wish, I wish I hadn't, I guess it's probably, since I'm making a video right now, it's probably the best way anyway. Um, was it just keep running till it gets done? And um, then I'll have to go back, and I don't have to make a video of the, you know, I can just do it. Like a, a I've, I, usually I just when I want to do something and I want to make a video of it, I just start from the beginning because a lot of times you miss some of the best stuff if you don't. But I knew it was really tricky and that I was probably going to go around in circles, and I did. Uh, so uh, I did that phone three, and I knew it didn't have very much data. I still don't understand why um, <clears throat> I was going to, I was just sitting there thinking, well, you know, I'm still, I was, I still don't understand why it, um, I think I'll get off of this backup drive now. Yeah. I don't want to accidentally mess in my backup up. So I'll go to my downloads folder again. That's my, where I'll leave it. <clears throat> um, I still don't understand why, um, When I went in there, let's go in there again, and I'll explain. I just realized. Let's see. <clears throat> let's just go this way. And the phone three, and it has a 32 gigabyte WinTech SD card. I just name things as to what they are, so I'll know what's what. Now, open camera is on top. Okay, four fifteen nineteen. Uh, it could be that, yeah, and then 313.19. So those are the recent files. Okay, so I think it did back up successfully. And you have to go way down there to get to 2018. Okay. Well, I watched these last couple of videos, and I thought there was something newer than that on there. That's what threw me off. Let's see, we're on the desktop, right? <clears throat> I think I'll go before I switch. Before I, I'm going to go ahead and play that, but let me switch to SM58. I meant to do that, go back to it a long time ago. <clears throat> when I cough and stuff, I can at least get away from it. Well, I can mute them if I could think, but usually I can't. When I'm coughing, I'm jerking around so much, I can't see the keyboard to hit the right keys, so, but I can move the SM58 away, and I can't move the lapels. So that's one, one benefit. But um, let's see, that keeps running. No errors at all so far. That's a real good sign. Yeah, now, if it will not, this is what I'm hoping for, that it keeps on copying, no matter how big the file is, and that the phone doesn't go to sleep or anything or lose, you know. Um, and, uh, I, and I will get my backups, whatever is on there. You know, I'll get them. And I won't have to fiddle around taking those phones out of my tripods and stuff and my rubber band mounts and all that. Now it went to another file, I think. Yeah, it went to some pictures. So that video, yeah, I'll look at it in a minute. But Now this is on phone three. This is the backup. This isn't on the phone. This is the backup. So I'm going to play this video. And this is not... Uh, I know what it. I know pretty much what it is. Hey, you down here? <clears throat> okay, I remember another one of my ideas. This is another note to self video. <clears throat> yeah, that I don't know if you can hear that good, but that's it says note to self video. I, I just try. I had never done this before. I use the camera, the front, whichever way you want to say it, the, the selfie camera. I used it because I just wanted to record something that I had thought of before I forgot it. And it looks so bad that I'm not going to upload it. You know, it's all washed. It's all uh, grainy and everything. This one, too. It's another one. Hey, you down here? Okay. Making a little uh, quick video. Uh... So that that's why I thought, I don't know if I got everything. But I do believe I did. Let's see. This one. That okay. I was just trying to make sure I had it. I like to leave them in video mode because that's usually what I want to do with them. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't actually, I didn't even intend to make that video. I, I could tell by. Now, this is 3.11.19. So that's not too long ago. Another one. 
sometimes I'm trying to show errors, but these phones just don't have good enough lenses to. Let's see what's the oldest one in 19. Right there. Oh. Hey, you down here? Okay. Um. Some reason I was doing a lot of that. Oh, that's a big video. Okay, 3 gigabyte. Let's see. That is 1031.18. So that's a real video. Hey, you down here? Okay, oh. so I'm out in the garage in my Gateway 500. The bottom one. These are both gateways here. The uh, bottom is... Pretty sure I have uploaded that video to YouTube, and I think now what I, I didn't mention that a while ago. Normally they upload to uh, automatically up even see even the big ones like that upload to Google Photos over my Wi-Fi. But what happens with this, and why I don't like using my and uh, one one of the reasons I don't like using my camera app is uh, <clears throat> it doesn't really matter what app. It's just that. Well, and they they only last about ten minutes, and I always go longer, way longer than that. Uh, and so I keep them plugged in. Well, if you accidentally unplug or or like wiggle that cable and disconnects and reconnects, it will either close the app or just reboot the phone. The other day I was working on the refrigerator and it kept rebooted the phone three times, and then the phone got hung in reboot mode. It wouldn't do nothing but reboot. So I and that was phone one I was using end up having to go get phone two and use it so these uh, but those videos are broken but they will play just fine in vlc when when they get stuck by power loss like that or by whatever i guess it's not power loss because the phones have batteries but when the phone reboots when it gets abruptly stopped without being closed the video file doesn't get closed properly it doesn't get an end ta data into it you know saying this is the end of the video they will still play in uh VLC video and some other apps, and then and if you upload them to YouTube manually, they will work. YouTube will put an end on them, and you know they transcode everything into what they want it to be anyway. So, and actually, you can see I'm recording an FLV, and YouTube, you know, doesn't use FLV anymore. That's flash video, <clears throat> uh, so they change it to whatever it is they want it to be. That's fine. But with me, they do it automatically on their server. Um, so in that process. Uh, even back when they used FLVs, uh, if you upload a file, even if it doesn't have the end on it, and I'll, one quick way you can tell is when you try to play the file, it uh, it'll play in VLC, but you can't fast forward it because it doesn't know where things are. You know, I've learned that years ago, uh, so I, that's how come I, I do know that's the case. You know, but um, so let's get in here and not internal storage SD card. DCIM, open camera, what? Yeah, open camera is the, has the newest video file now because that's what it's, and see it's working on one right now, looks like. Yeah. So it's working on a video. I'm trying to go back to the top and it went, jumped, it jumped. I was just trying to go from the, there's quite a few videos in there. Uh, but yeah, so things are still working. Let's see, if I go back, it'll go out of that folder. Yeah, it's working on that video. And I don't see the temp. That's what I was kind of, where's the temp? But anyway, uh, that that folder has, I, I haven't managed, you know, as you can see, those zero byte files, I really ought to delete them because they're never going to work. There's no data there, you know, and it's confusing sometimes. Well, if you just start, like what I'll do is I'll select them all and then right click and say open in VLC and, and it'll, have errors all over the place but i also thought that maybe the files are on the phones and i'll wait and see if they get uh overwritten but and here's th those are some files that broke that like the app crash that's usually what causes that is the app crashes and it never recorded the video uh, but i need to clean those up because they get confusing okay so this one oh is it still writing it did it fail there's one that says part up there. Oh, this could be one of those ones I was talking about that's broken. But why is it in that folder? What was the date on that? Oh, that's from 2018. That's the same 755 megabytes. And then, you know what You know what probably happened? When I was trying to back these up. <clears throat> yeah, okay, I was trying to back them up with uh filezilla and it kept hanging up 
See, I was saying it wouldn't do anything more than a gigabyte. It it may have hung up on this one. And so it just, well, we were sitting there watching that. So it worked. So here's what I'm thinking happened now. I was, it was, uh, sometimes when, it, when you're using, using um, say like Crusader especially to copy files over, you'll see that. You'll see the same file num name and you'll see part and, you know, I, well, I hope it didn't fail. But anyway, what could have happened is not that it failed, but this one was a broken, uh, it didn't finish whenever that was. The thing is the dates are different. Same. So that's 12, 19, 18. Okay. And that's 7, 18, 18. So that file is good, but that is the one I'm pretty sure that we just wrote. I could be wrong. I might be confused. That file, either that, either this file just got written and it's good now. Well, with the dates is what's throwing me off. That's not today. That's 18. That's the date of the file. So what I'm thinking is that's one out of the last. I could have been. Oh, yeah. If I was using FileZilla, it won't do SFTP right. It does the regular FTP file date names. It gives it the, the day that you were trying to copy it instead of the day of the file was created or last modified or whatever. Uh, so that could have been the, a broken FileZilla copy. So uh, let's see what this one is. It should play just fine. Hey, you doing here? Okay. Well, I'm trying to get as close to the screen as I can get in emails, K mods, kernel modules, to make it. Uh, but it has been locking up. Okay, so I don't know what that's all about, but that's not what I'm worried about. Now, this one, since it doesn't have a video file extension, it wouldn't open up. It would be out. Would it would open up in a in a zip file program? Let's see. Usually, where's yeah, I don't even see open with multimedia. You, it doesn't look like you can even try to open it in VLC from by right clicking. Don't want to run it. Oh, there it is. Actions. <clears throat> Open it with KB rename. Create file project with K3B. So yeah, it doesn't. Uh, it's not even in this particular instance. Say, like, say, if I was up here, I'd say open, open, or open with, and I'd be able to say VLC. That's what I wanted to open it with. What I can do is open up VLC. Hey, you don't just stop that, but leave it open this time and say open a file navigate my way way back over there to that drive you see it's going to go to there the last the last folder i was in see great expansion drive and see when i reformatted that the eight terabyte one i gave it i gave it uh, i gave it a new name and so now uh well i had to so i'd know which one was which because they originally had the same name but um phone three phone two where am i I'm in phone two. Okay. Okay. Phone two. And that one is still being copied. Okay. Now, I'm trying to go to phone two DCIM camera and I want two one oh eight. Yeah, let's just yeah looks like the same number but that one says part so let's see if it's a broken that video again broken or what it is okay bill c phone two camera right Okay, so it looks like it's not going to see it. It's only seeing the ones with the proper, well, because it's set for media files. It'll say all files. Okay, now we can see it. I don't think it'll play it, but we'll try it anyway. Put it on all files down there, and now that's the file I'm looking for. Let's see if it plays. Hey, you don't hear? Okay. It's playing it. Well, 
I'm trying to get as close yeah, to the screen as I can video. get without having to zoom in, so maybe it can I need to check into it and start giving trouble. Just and it can even, no, it, it could fast forward some, but not all the way. The thing is, it's really I've never seen before, and it's that's what's ain't coming back. It's just flat locked up. It's not just like, I mean, that looks like that's. You know. yeah, it gets so far, and then it, it, it loses its data to know what's going on. Now, let's play this one. How are you doing here? Usually you can't okay. fast form at all. Well, to do with what apps I was running, but probably not really install virtual they wouldn't mount him. Uh, and with this phone's up, you know, desktop. See, you can go all the way around right YouTube to the or whatever. We'll well, that's the same phone. How are you doing here? Part. Okay. Well, I'm trying to get it in uh, Liberty. So I think since I've got this figured out now, well, let's wait till those backups are done. But uh, what I need to do is delete that file. But I won't do it while I'm making those backups. It could be that it's just still working on it. And uh, I don't think so at all. But, uh, yeah, it, it could be that I don't think it'll, it'll it's still working on it or it'll come back and work on it again or anything like that. Well, of course, it wouldn't do that. But let's just don't do anything that could cause me trouble right now. If this is what it's writing right now. No telling how big it is. It's already over 600 megabytes. But I don't see a temp file like I was talking about. Like, see, that's what I thought was going on, and I guess it's got to do with um, Lucky Backup is actually. Let's see. Can't remember <clears throat> the name of the. It, it's really a what it's running. Uh, you might have given us a clue. You know those commands that you could copy and run. Rsync. It runs. Uh, a terminal program called rsync, a command line program called rsync. So that's what Lucky Backup is doing is running rsync. It's a just it's just a GUI to 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 help you set up and run rsync in the GUI. And it's wonderful. I've been using it for years and years. Uh, probably I don't maybe ten years now. I don't know, but it's my absolute favorite backup. I used to use backups that compressed files and everything. Uh, because you know that saves space but now we're up to 94 percent so so far we're chugging along just nicely um but the problem i had with that is any anytime your backup got bigger than two gigabytes then my machines could not unpack them for me to get one single even though it would be just saved into tar gz or something something that you can just uh go to and you know pretend that was a tar gz start going through it uh, anything uh two gigabytes and over it would, and I always did it in Crusader, and it doesn't really matter what program you use. It will use up so much of your memory and, and your and your CPU processing power that your machine will usually lock up. Two gigabyte was the max I could ever just open up. And so anytime I wanted, you'd, I don't want to restore the whole thing. I just want the files I'm missing. Maybe I accidentally deleted a file or something, you know. So uh, Lucky Backup, it can do that. But by default, it doesn't compress the files, and I'll leave it like that because I don't want them compressed. So um, I just learned that it's better to have bigger, you know, just have to buy more hard drives than, uh, because anytime I want to back up, I do. And, and some of those programs would have one option only, and that's override all per existing files. Well, then you lose everything newer than the backup. Uh, so uh, most of them don't, but there were some, especially in Windows, it was like that. Uh, so I learned to uh, use programs that I learned that I like using programs that don't compress the files, uh, and uh, then I can go in there, find the files I want, copy just them back to my regular drive or to the other machine or whatever it is I'm trying to do. <coughs> Throat's getting raw, and I uh, let's see, I hadn't intended on keeping on going. After once I got it started, I know it would take a good while. Um, keep it on talking. I mean, I've got half of it. Let's see if I can. Nah, it's gonna be nasty. I started a cough drop, and then I didn't finish it because I wanted to go ahead and do my video, and it helped my throat, you know. So I put half of it back into the wrapper, but they get all gooey and nasty when you do that. So I'm not gonna save it. I'll get a new one. These cough drops are don't want to come out of the wrapper. <coughs> that phone 
It's just laying up there. Kind of worry about where it is because I can, uh, when I pick up my water cup to get a drink, I can bump it real easy. Why did I take it back out? Oh, because I thought it wasn't working right. I thought it was, oh, I did have a problem. It, oh, my problem wasn't the phone. It was my, the way I wrote things out and the way I set things up and lucky back up. Yeah, let's put that thing back on the uh, stand. It's really a safer place for it. I'll go back on the lapel so when I move, I won't lose my voice here. But yeah, just so happens I can tilt that down where it's setting. Hook it up. Normally, these are my cameras, you know. Well, I mean, they are my cameras, but right now, it's an FD, it's an SSH server. <laughs> I don't even have the camera app turned on in this one. Okay, let's go see, make sure we didn't disturb our backup. I don't think I did, but make sure. Seems to be copying away just fine. And see, you can watch the progress if you really, if you want to. Um, you can roll it back, but it'll go forward on you all the time. But right now we're doing that file right there. And it will tell you what percent it is. Oh, 46 megabyte of... Hmm? I don't know what that means. I think maybe the index is might be at the top. No, there's no index. Yeah, there's no errors other than can't go into that dot Android secure folder. And I don't know if that's considered an error. It's in red about the login. I just thought it was a standard message. I do know I changed my password. I guess I should, I guess I should triple check and make sure that that there's not a root password set to, to the default. It didn't used to be. I certainly didn't change it. But anyway, um, hundred thirty-one megabytes, six percent. Oh, one point forty-two megabytes a second. So it's not copying real fast. Not very fast at all. Um, and like I said, uh, that reminds me of, I'd, I ended up, where did I read that? Oh, it was in the help, or maybe just in the main menus of the SSH droid. Oh, no, it was on there. Yeah, I'll go, let's see, are we still on the, uh, I'll show you the app. Okay, so I just want to get back on the SM58 too. So SSH Droid, I'll show you the app in the App Store. This is Android. If you hadn't, well, yeah, I mentioned enough. Yeah, I mentioned that already. It's actually doing pretty. Uh, it's not hurting my performance of my machine. Well, it's, of course, I just opened up. Let's see, lucky. Let's see what it's doing. See, it never shows a lot. It doesn't even show any CPU usage. I think when I'm copying, it does show CPU usage whenever it's backing up to those USB drives from the hard drive, and that's probably because it can go much faster. You know, it's not being throttled by the Wi-Fi. So I guess that's why it's not sh killing me where I can't make my video. I didn't think I'd really be able to continue. I figured the machine would start getting in trouble. I do need to pay attention to how much stuff I have open, though. I'm going to close the uh, Lucky Backup while I've got the web browser. I mean, Crusader while I have the web browser opened up. So, um, let me get in my bookmarks. And, uh, I don't remember where it is, actually. There. Android SSH um, remote commands. I was looking up, you know, how to do that, and I accidentally came across, uh, sort of by name, I think that might be better. Let's 
SSH button. Now let's organize it by the SSH droid on Google Play. And there's one that I found. I thought I'd show it uh, when I was doing my research. But this is the app I'm using. And it has ads and offers in-app purchases and, of course, purchases to get the bigger version. And it, it, I guess not terrible reviews, but I like to get things that are over four, you know, four, uh, over four stars. That's just, I mean, that really is four stars. But um, Let's see. But it, it's really gives real good uh, instructions here and but inside the app itself better but probably the best instructions inside of an app that I remember ever seeing uh, let's see if you like it pay for the pro version extended notification controls home screen and lock screen widget shared key authentication that right there you can't do in the free version and so but you can do the login which is what I just did so if I'd have tried to do that, it wouldn't have worked. If I had, and I would have would have had a heck of a time figuring out why. I bet. Uh, Wi-Fi auto start whitelist. I don't know what that even is. Um, automation with intense support. I don't know what that means either. Intense support. Maybe it's them. I don't know. Support from them. I don't know. Ad free. Uh, that's the thing I can't stand about <laughs> Android apps in general is that some of the ad on the phone, you know, they're so bad and so intrusive. Um, let's see. <clears throat> of course, there's, um, I'm using Linux, not Windows. Let's see. You can do it within Nautilus or Dolphin. Those are uh, the default. Like if you open up, I don't like those Windows style, Explorer style file managers but I won't open it up because I'm too much of a machine but whatever whichever one is the default that uh, you might be able to do some SF SFTP transfers just enter the SFT address and so on but I don't like doing that anyway if I wanted to use a regular app I would want to use Crusader <coughs> remote shell <coughs> this is what I was wanting to learn about <coughs> but I ran into things that helped me with lucky backup <coughs> And I did do that, and it's pretty cool, some of the things you can do. This was the research I was actually wanting to do, the remote shell uh, with with, with uh, let's just say, stored running. You can log in with a remote shell and do run commands on the phone. And so, you know, I can't type on the phone to save my life. So that's great to be able to do that. Plus, I can't see them. That's one thing about those. They're only four-inch screens. I can't read them without a magnifying glass. So, uh, and the other day, I was trying to pinch and zoom, and I couldn't even get that to work. So, and it usually doesn't work good for me because then you can't see the whole area you're trying to read, so you keep having to slide it back and forth, and then it usually does something crazy, blocks up the screen. So, let's see. What's the other thing? Mac users. I don't see the. It was some sort of help thing I wanted to show. I don't know. It's got a lot of instructions for Mac users, but um, anyway, that's it. This is the app that I'm using. There's another one that I saved. Maybe I didn't save it in here. I think I might have put it in my Android folder. Let's see. Oh, this might be it. Let's see. SSH helper, but it's not compatible with my devices. Yeah. And I had never heard of it before. It was recommended in an article that I was reading. And see, it's rated 4.7. And it does the same things, but it seems like it has a lot more features. And it's, I guess the one I'm thinking is it, Somewhere it says, doesn't say open source. Ah, it's free, open source, 
And there are no ads. Now, that's the kind of app I'd want to be using if I could. A license, GPL license. I can't use it on these phones unless I upgrade my operating system to a newer version. You have to have... tells you somewhere in here how what version you have to have. <clears throat> but um, anyway, so... Yeah, I would, I, I don't know, I can't say, you know, I can't say I recommend this because I've never got to try it, but I'm definitely interested in it. So, um, there's not, I'm sitting there thinking, oh, I, might, I could log into the thing on the, over the, you know, SSH shell, but that, I might jack something up to help. Got a very important backup running and show some of those, you, you I, I'm not a real big command line person, so I, I have to really find the commands and copy and paste them. There's a few things I'd like to be able to do um, over the remote shell, but right this minute, I can't remember what any of them really were. All I did is some basic stuff, you know, just look at the specs and the stats of the, fo of the phone and stuff like that. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, these... Um, this was my research links that I saved the other day. And it tells you how to install, uh, well, that tells you how to install Android SDK and run ADB shell. That's really getting it. That's getting into being an Android developer. Um, but it did tell me some things that helped me with just basic stuff too. I didn't read all, of, you know, well, I watched those videos, but I didn't read all the pages I found because I, I saw that I wasn't wanting to do that. But how to install an APK file in the terminal. Only thing is you've got to have that APK already on there. And really, I mean, if you want to install an APK file, now I saved this one for some reason. Oh, yeah, I think that's, you can send SSH commands to Linux host. I thought that was interesting. I don't really want to do that, but you, can put, you set up a, a button, you know, it puts a button icon on your, your phone screen, you know, and then you push that button and it sends SSH commands to Linux, uh, you know, laptop or desktop host. Um, <clears throat> that's why you don't want to run an SSH server on your machine all the time uh, unless you're really behind some good firewalls and um, nobody vindictive gets in your house <laughs> or in your office and... Uh, and you have really good passwords and stuff. Yeah, with with the abilities, you know, phone, these phones are fully functional computers. They just work different, you know. They have the touch screens and all that junk. But most things you could do with a Linux system, you could do with a phone. So if you see somebody sitting around tapping on their phone and making a stupid uh, sneaky grin... <clears throat> um, it may be trying to hack your your systems, you know. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> anyway, and they may have a push button to do it with. There's no push button app for Linux. You've got to get in the. You've got to use a program or you, or get in the command line to do this stuff. <laughs> if you you know if you're sitting there with your laptop, say, and trying to hack into something or whatever. At least I've never. Well, I don't try. I only learn. I try to learn about this sort of thing enough to protect myself. I don't even want to intrude into other people's networks and computers and all that stuff. I, I don't have time for that anyway. Even I'm curious as to learn how to do things, uh, but most of that, like I said, I'm not good at working the command line anyway. So most of that stuff, it is generally needs to be done in the command line. But uh, I got into it years ago when I started getting into web servers, setting up web servers of my own, uh, I wanted to be able to protect them, you know. And of course, I had a certain amount of curiosity on what could be done, you know, and stuff like that. But <clears throat> Okay, so let's close that. See how we're doing over here. We're still at 94%. And we're still staying right at, you know, one point. 38, 1.44 megabits a second. That's pretty pretty slow compared to my 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 Wi-Fi speeds. Like I said, my router should be able to do 750, 800 megabits. Um, you, so you could definitely 
but it's not you know that's what it's doing and i have and i did all that research i, I tried to figure out how to make sure it didn't break number one and i saw well i saw in the uh, ssh droid app it's built into it and it tells you how to set the settings so that it doesn't go to sleep or at, uh, there's android will uh when the phone screen goes to sleep it will throttle the wi-fi it will slow it down um i wonder if that's what's happening but but i have it plugged into power so i would think it wouldn't be it's not just running on battery i'm trying to get this phone where i can see it oh the screen's on so it's not the screen hasn't gone to sleep and it's still that slow so um i don't know if i did a bunch of research before i you know for today and i don't know of any way to make it go any faster at least it's working as long as it works and doesn't break and it copies all my files no matter what size they are i'll be happy because then i can turn it on let it start backing up like this go on and do other things <clears throat> the only well since it's not slowing down my machine like i was afraid it would do like the norm my normal backups do because it's writing really fast i think it's why it's really working the machine um, and I can go on and, you know, do what I want to do <coughs> within reason. So, um, I think I'm going to go one more. I think I'm going to do one last check and then, and then I don't think there's any point in rambling on about it any longer. <coughs> I'm showing it, you know, hopefully it will finish like it should and uh, I guess the uh, I think this one the phone three I you know that's not the one I'm doing right now I guess it did successfully back up everything I need I keep getting on my wrong keys I hate that I've always been pretty good about hitting my home keys without even looking at them, but lately I can't hit them to save my life. Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying, uh, supposedly backing up my internal storage 62316. It's the newest thing in there. But there, that hardly, those files generally don't get changed unless I say save something in that downloads folder or something. There's a, there's a program for my endoscope camera but uh, I already tried it and it wouldn't it didn't it didn't did it work I don't think it worked on the phones uh, you suppose you, my endoscope has a dual USB it's got a regular size B I think it is and then micro I think the other one you flip it it's really kind of cool you flip the deal the you flip the connector and it opens up it has a hinge on it and it gets really small it's fit your phone put, put it that way and that's the program <clears throat> that uh, would make it work. Um, but I tried it and it didn't work, so I guess I forgot what that program Or I thought I might try it again. Well, I probably thought I might try it again later, say if I upgraded the OS or something. I think the OS wasn't new enough. Anyway, that's got me off. But see, there's the original folders. Uh, on, this is on the onboard storage, but I've deleted all the videos and stuff out of there before I did any backups. So. But I told the system to put everything it possibly could on the end. And it still fills those that two gigabytes of onboard storage up all the time with cache files and everything. Just a few things. Sometimes some app will go rogue and start saving junk like videos or something to the, that. And uh, I won't know it till it fills up. And then <clears throat> there's some yeah, an APK for Oh, Kingo Root. Yeah, I saved that one because I, I rooted the phone with it once, and the, but then the, the bootloader's protected on these phones, so when you reboot it, it goes away. Um, I don't know how advisable it was to use that app because it's, you, I always use uh, online, you know, scanners before for everything that I download, and some of them say it's a bad app. You know, some of them say it's okay, some of them say it didn't. And, it was the only one I could find. There was only two that I could find that would do those Alcatel phones. You have to find the right one that will work with your phone, and there's some of my personal files. 
let's see <clears throat> okay now we're still copying that see it's 1.5 gigabytes and it's still not finished as the files get bigger the numbers you can stop being able to watch them in real time uh, you'll sit there long enough you'll see it change yeah there it goes once it gets over a gig then it slows down quite a bit and the bigger it gets the slower it is like this one over here it's my video that i'm making right now that's my backup video for the stream which may be i probably may end up uploading it and then just like turn those stream videos into you know not make them public or whatever but uh <clears throat> we'll see that break in the middle may not really matter um but um anyway see that one hasn't changed but it, it sometimes you know the videos quit working that's why i leave this open because sometimes they actually break you know they just quit working even though i'm still streaming and stuff but uh, lately i haven't had that happen in quite a while like in the last several quite a few months but uh six months or more <clears throat> but uh maybe longer but that's what got me to watching just because you'd think you were making your backup video when it would quit working but uh let's see those pictures those are probably regular pictures yeah i don't know what they are so i guess i won't thumb through them uh i mean there shouldn't be anything uh just maybe i might have a i might have a screenshot of a password that's what i'm worried about something like yeah, that's just, I don't know why I took that. I think it was just a random thing. I just took a picture of my screen, my my, my work area there. <clears throat> but it um, looks pretty junky, especially when it's a crooked picture. But I don't care. As long as it's functional for me. Okay, so yeah, now it's 1.7 gigabytes. So we're still copying away. And of course, you can tell that by just looking and looking back. Of it. But yeah, that one, that part file... It was written 12, 19, 18, and it's still in there. It needs to be deleted because now I know I'll probably forget again, but hopefully if I remember, I'll go in there and delete that and keep the other one. So the actual file was even older, 7, 18, 18, uh, and it's all looks to be all there. It doesn't it seems to be. I'd have to look at the end again and make sure I was saying goodbye or whatever. But So I think we're doing all right. I don't know. Uh, it's really hard to tell. Well, I don't need to go back there again. It's really hard to tell <clears throat> if that onboard is getting copied because there's just not too often new files on there, you know. Uh, there should be some, maybe some cache or something that might be new enough to me to say, okay, yeah, that, that got copied. Uh, you know, it's newer than everything else. But, um, Yeah, I think it's in the middle of all the videos now. And uh, it's going to be a while. So there's no point in, you know, continuing on there. I'm trying to see. I guess we could, well, we can see the name of the video we're copying. I mean, I can, I probably could log into the phone with like FileZilla or something and just peruse through the files but i don't want to slow this down anymore and i don't want to accidentally you know sometimes you give you start connecting too many connections to a machine sometimes the, the one they'll say the one you really care about it it loses break, breaks its pipe you know it, it and it loses connection or something so I'm, not, I'm gonna let it run leave it alone so this is the one we're copying now and it's already up to one was one 1.7 gigabytes so and I don't like to leave that where I could accidentally hit a board or something. So I usually click off in the window somewhere or something to make sure that's not a board, it's not highlighted. Any app, you know, that's got something going on. Or like not make sure that my backup video, I'm not selecting it, so I accidentally delete it with the keyboard shortcuts or something. <coughs> hit delete on the keyboard. You know, I use my keyboard for a lot of things and like if I like when I'm navigating through Crusader, I mostly use the keyboard to navigate through there. And if I miss when I'm not looking and I'm trying to hit home and end, so if I'm trying to hit end, I've done that more than once, trying to hit end, but I miss it and you know, delete is just to the left of end. So, uh, 
delete file by accident. And it, you, I try to set everything up to ask before, you know, like, do you really want to delete that? No, oh, no, you know, but some things like, say, abort a backup, there's no, I don't think there's anything saying, do you really want to quit? I think it just quits. So, uh, <coughs> my throat is, even though I had this cough drop and I stopped coughing so much, my throat is just raw from talking because. I spent all after most of the afternoon, well morning. This is 4:38, so it's not too late. Uh, I spent from 10 or so in the morning until I don't what, before right before I started this video, setting everything up. I was setting up my lapel mic and on phone three and doing all that stuff. I had hours doing that. Uh, finally got that. By the time I was done, by the, I was ready to make my video. My throat, my I'm, my voice is too tired to make a video almost. <coughs> but uh, at least I'm getting something done finally again. Because my, well, I won't go off into all those details. I may go ahead and upload those videos. And if you're interested in all the settings for OBS Studio and what, and what it takes to get uh, lapel mics to go through a phone, through the Wi Fi, and to OBS Studio, then uh, I've already made some videos about that. But uh, <coughs> those videos I made today, I was just making test videos i didn't uh, live stream them and i thought well if they turn out to be something i think is interesting then i can upload them which is really kind of a pain because it takes a long time to upload those these videos even though i have 200 megabits down and 10 up it's so abysmal 10, 200 down and 10 up thing is that your up and down upload and download speed works together you have to it's always sending and receiving data at the same time so that slow upload speed is capping what you can really download. I mean, it's fast. It downloads fast. Well, faster than I've, you know, faster than I've ever seen downloads, you know, now that we have 200 megabits. But it could be so much faster if, if you had even just, I mean, you, from what I gather and understand, and I haven't read up on it in so quite a few years now, but from what I gather, if you got 200 down, you, you would really need like 100 up to really get full benefit of that just in your downloads forget how wonderful it'd be to be able to upload your youtube videos and all that stuff quickly you know but uh, you don't need you know like 50 50 you know you don't need 100 uh, 200 down and 200 up it'd be great years ago back when your internet speed was you know 10 megabits well actually i think we had 30 on charter or something like that and 10 was it was a wire wireless outfit that was doing 10 up and 10 down and i almost switched to them but they were going to cost a bunch of money to install the radios and stuff and also i already started finding out me and my neighbor we were checking into them and they were uh it turned out they didn't manage their business it was a local company um they were always up and down all the time and be down for a week sometimes. And it turned out they weren't managing their business. They weren't even paying their rental fees on their towers. And so they're, and what was going on is the companies they were renting their towers from to put their, they put their radios on there. They were turning off their radios <clears throat> because they weren't paying their, their rental fees on their towers. So I can't remember what the name of that company was, but they're not in business anymore. That's back in the early 2000s. But uh, <clears throat> anyway... Sometimes the old cable company, at least they've been around forever, and and they do stay up most of the time. And when it does go down, then they fix, usually fix it pretty quick. So, <clears throat> but you're at the mercy of whatever they decide to do and charge you, though. And that I hate. <clears throat> but uh, unless you want to go with, you know, one of the other. Well, the other, we got plenty of other companies, several other companies to choose from here. Close to, I'm close to Fort Worth. We're in the, you know, close to D Dallas, Fort Worth. So I'm close to Fort Worth. So, uh, but this one is really, from what I, I've I've heard some really bad stories with you know other companies. So uh, this one seems to be the best one in this area. Although I've gotten awfully upset with them at different times when they went up on the prices and stuff. They, they, they always uh, make all kinds of wonderful deals for new customers, but somebody that's been with them for 20 years, you know, give them, give us nothing, you know, <clears throat> except for our, our bill ever so often. 
they did finally do something. They did. Uh, they went up. Used to every time they went up in speed, within a month or two, they went up in price. They went up in speed. Was it twice? They went up to 100 megabits, and then not too long after, they went to 200 megabits, and they didn't actually. I know this second time anyway for sure they didn't actually go up in price. First time since I've been with them that they did that. Now say that and then they'll get a notice. Hope hopefully not <clears throat> that they're going up on everybody. But <clears throat> but I think because there are more competitors, they've realized they can't just they're not the only game in town anymore. You know. Back in when they first came, you know when they first. Uh, was Charter back then, now Spectrum brought them out, but uh, when Charter first came to our neighborhood with the, you know, cable inter, inter, cable internet, um, they were the only high-speed internet. It was either dial-up or them. And then in a couple of years, you know, we had AT&T. AT&T put, up a wire, put out a wireless thing for a while, and they canceled, they took, they canceled the whole thing. They, they ran it for a year or two, and then they just canceled the whole thing. I think it was because they couldn't secure it. Uh, back in those days, it was wide open, and if you knew, if you had the right kind of radio, you could connect to it. Of course, it was expensive, but, and I wasn't going to do that anyway. But it was it was uh, <laughs> against the law. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I don't know. There's all a. I think it might have. It was against their rules, but actually, from what I've gathered over all these years. If it's encrypted, it's against the law. If it's open and unencrypted, it's not against the law. But I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bank on that. <clears throat> but uh, kind of the general rule of thumb, but uh, of data and radio wave, radio signals and stuff. Anyway, I don't. Why am I going on about that? Okay, so I always do that more when I get tired. Let's see. Oh, it's up to ninety-five percent. I guess it's on another file now. I, I can't remember those long number file names, so I, I have no idea what the, I didn't even I don't even try, you know, to uh, <clears throat> remember those unless I'm looking straight at them, then I can kind of do it. Like I, I was kind of amazed that I was able to compare those two a while ago. Usually, sometimes I can't, I can't do that. My eyes, like I said, I might have I said that I say that all the time. Uh, yeah, see, I'm using the keyboard to just type and, and use arrow keys and stuff, and I can go through real fast. Okay, now that, yeah, open camera. Okay, the one that's being written now, well, it's the same one. So it hasn't gone to a new file then. It just, it, the percentage changed, but it hasn't gone to a new file yet. And all those JPEGs, let's see, there's a video. 117.19. That's pretty old. Let's play a bit of that. Let's see what we do. Oh, I think I played that already. Or at least I'm familiar with it. I'm plugging oh, it again. No. It comes up like that was one that I think the phone quit working or something. I think I started it up and the app crashed right after it got going. I, know, I, I, I do have those videos uploaded, the ones that are 117.19. You know what? I don't know because those are seven thirty-one eighteen. So there should be more videos of that of that day. But maybe that's what's getting uploaded right now. Let's look five twenty-one eighteen. I don't know. Well, it could have been that I had trouble with that phone and I started using a different phone. So it's these phones. One of them it'll work per perfectly every time you use it for a month, several months, and then one day they go nuts, and then I'll grab another one. They're like I said, they're all the same model of phone bought within the same couple of weeks. But anyway, and amazingly, if you're using this uh, Wi-Fi streaming app, if you set them up and get them streaming, uh, you can easily stream for an hour or two. I've gone five hours before, and they were, and they still were working as long as they're plugged in. You know, and the batteries won't run down. But I've Streaming, I use an app called IP Webcam, but streaming over the Wi-Fi and making my videos that way uh, is way more dependable than using the camera apps. And it really doesn't matter. Um, 
you know, you could say, well, the app you're using is buggy or something. I do like that open camera app a lot because it has so many features, but the one that came with it, which is probably should be pretty stable since they packaged it with the phone, you know, it, it, it uh, it'll crash. It's crashed sometimes too. And it doesn't, it won't do as high as high resolution and stuff. And it doesn't have the settings that you can't change the settings the way I want to, you know, resolution and the DPI and all that stuff. So, uh, although I've gotten to where I leave uh, open camera on the defaults, but that's it makes a real good quality video that way though. So, because they've they've kind of I guess learned that anybody using an app wants a pretty high quality high quality videos they can get. So they, I think they set the defaults to uh, highest qualities they can get uh, that's stable on the app. You know, <clears throat> but uh, open camera is an open source camera app that. And there's uh, lots of other apps out there I've ran into built on open camera. As soon as I got into them, and they would be like limited functionality, pay for the pro kind of thing. Get in there, and I'm like, this is open camera. I mean, all they did, they, all they did was change the colors, you know, uh, color scheme. And a lot of times they would even say, this is built on open camera. Um, there's only one other app I used, and I could tell it was built on open camera. It would do one thing that I wanted to do that open camera wouldn't do, and I don't think it still will, and that is you could plug your lapel in because I always used to have a lot of trouble. The audio was too quiet w uh, with any app, uh, any camera app. But there was one, I don't remember the name of it, I just remember it was all red all over, and it was built on open camera, but some they had done something in it to where you you know if you plugged in a lapel, it would work. Open camera won't, it, it has the settings and you can set them all day long, but it won't work. It, it doesn't, it still uses the onboard. Even when you have a lapel plugged in, it'll use the onboard mic. And uh, so that app, but the thing is that app would put a watermark in your video and it wouldn't let you do more than 720p, I think. Something wasn't high enough resolution. I remember that. Yeah, it was 720, I think. Either that or like the bottom of 1080p, I can't remember for sure. But anyway, uh, and I didn't like that watermark. And uh, so I, you know, I kept it around for a while and then finally uninstalled it off all my phones because I never used it. Um, and it really aggravates me when people build their software on open source, which they got for free, <coughs> and then, <coughs> you know, make it a super limited functionality and then charge you to make it work just as good as the what they built it off of, you know, or maybe maybe not even as good as what they built it off of. But like I said, the only feature it had that I was interested in was that the lapel mic would uh, work in it. Um, and But I got away from that now because I, I plug my lapel mic into phone three, stream over the Wi-Fi, and, and then I have to can do two camera shoots with the camera one and two and switch with OBS Studio back and forth between them. So the only kavat to that is the audio video never, never completely stays in sync. Because of, think about the nature of, you know, you're, you've got three separate streams and there's nothing to sync them, really. I mean, there's no empty time code in, in all this. It's crazy because digital is supposed to be so much better than analog. Well, I used to work at a TV station back in yeah, early, uh, when was that? Oh, about 95 or 97 or something. I was a master control operator at a local small TV station in Dallas. And... Of course, everything that was recorded with analog cameras back in those days, the tube cameras and everything else, and the SVHS cameras, they actually were using SVHS cameras to record their shows. Uh, they did live shows, and uh, they were, and they recorded them at the same time, and I'd be playing them back. I worked the midnight shift on the weekends, and uh, they... Uh, Anyway, simpty time code, that's whatever. You had to learn that. You know, you had to learn how to use that uh, to, to, be, to do any pro video, audio and video. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> you hardly ever, in digital video, you hardly ever even see a mention of time codes at all. And they don't match themselves up automatically, especially when you're doing, well, when you're streaming audio and video over the Wi-Fi. Okay, it's digital inside your phones. Then it gets streamed over the Wi-Fi. Okay, I started to say it goes analog at that point, but maybe it doesn't. It stays to be a digital stream, I guess. 
Then it gets in, it goes through your, you know, software on your computer. It's mixed down. Uh, there's, there's really, in my mind, there's, uh, even though, well, I can kind of see it. I, th it does the same thing as, it ends up being the same um, problem that there always has been with syncing audio and video, is that, uh, well, it travels. It's called latency. It travels through the air and through the machines. <coughs> <coughs> different rates of speed even though it's <coughs> all happening at the same time <coughs> doesn't reach your software at the same time exactly within milliseconds you know it's close <coughs> but um, they'd completely when they went digital <coughs> completely just stop using this empty time code now I have read recently <coughs> that there is some some cameras more pro cameras do have some sort of digital time code that you can use. <coughs> but it's definitely not in a phone. I've never heard of it in any uh, prosumer cameras or anything. It might be in some. <coughs> I don't study on them a whole lot, but I do kind of like to keep up. Uh, watch a few videos and read a few articles and dream about a better camera <clears throat> but uh, when you're doing a one man shoot like this it's best that you set everything up you know on tripods or whatever static and then use software to switch it of course I mean you could use an actual switcher but that's real expensive so <clears throat> um I can't talk anymore. I guess I'm just jabbering anyway. <clears throat> I think I better go ahead. And <clears throat> think just so I won't. <clears throat> I really hate to. Too many of these will burn your throat. These are good. Ricotta. Cola. <clears throat> but, uh. Well, <clears throat> I keep saying I have to go and then I don't go. Oh, <clears throat> suddenly it's, it's a drainage it just went completely nuts these will help a little bit basically about as long as you've got one in your mouth that'll help with the drainage but then it quit helping after that I guess I need to <clears throat> I didn't want to have enough when you take an allergy pill or a cold pill really what I use they uh, make you worse before they make you better. So I thought, well, I'll wait till after I do my video because I don't want to get out of control. <laughs> Coughing with drainage. If they do, they make you drain more for a long, for maybe 30, 30 minutes to an hour, depending on this. The ones that I'm taking right now, the cheaper ones, they do that real bad for about an hour, I think. Seems like, <clears throat> seems like forever. Now, this is going to be long, uh, a long copy, like I thought. So I was looking at the copy. It's still working away. There's no real... No, I, I, like I said, I can't remember the file that it's on or anything. So that works. Uh, I can see that it's working. Hopefully uh, there won't be any, you know, losing the connections or any of that kind of stuff, and it will copy back up everything. And I'm not going to delete anything off that phone until I have manually compared, you know, I'll um, look on the phone. Well, what I can do is <clears throat> use, um, well, if I have to, I'll use FileZilla just as a file browser and do it remotely. And then, I, and then I'll, uh, I can, you know, one, on the right side, I'll look at the phone. On the left side, I'll look at the <clears throat> local files and see if they're the same size and name. <clears throat> and, uh, <coughs> yeah, <coughs> lucky backups. <coughs> uh, I guess you have to go. I don't know why I keep trying to talk. <coughs> <laughs> All right, before I, I 
I'm gonna go before I'm done. Okay, I'll I'll report back after it's done. <clears throat> okay, I'll try to anyway if I remember. I'm gonna have time. <clears throat> I got lots of things to do. <clears throat> All right, bye bye. <laughs>